Welcome to Henry Ford Health Transplant, and thank you for choosing our team to care for your kidney transplant needs. I am Dean Kim, Surgical Director of the Kidney and Pancreas Transplant Program. Please write down any questions you may think of during this video. We are happy to answer any of your questions or discuss any topics further. The listing process sorts through your medical problems to assure that kidney transplant will benefit you. Some medical history will be gathered when you schedule your first appointment. At your appointment, you will learn more about the transplant process from a nurse coordinator. The next step is to meet with the clinical team members, including a transplant nephrologist, a social worker, a transplant surgeon, and a dietitian, if indicated. Your transplant nurse will give you a list of required tests and appointments. You will need to work with your transplant nurse to complete these tests and have the results reviewed. Once all of your results are in order, your case will be discussed at our selection meeting where a decision will be made about your listing for transplant. Your nurse coordinator will discuss this decision with you. If listed, you will be seen annually by our team. Once listed, you are eligible for kidney transplant from either a living or a deceased donor. Living donor kidney is usually from a friend, a family member, or anyone who is willing to donate and is found to be healthy enough to donate. Your nurse coordinator can provide you with information on the website where living donors can sign up and be tested. There are several benefits for living donor kidney transplants. The living donor kidney is usually of good quality and lasts longer. A living donor kidney lasts on average 12 to 15 years, whereas a kidney from a deceased donor lasts on average 8 to 10 years. Living donor kidney transplants can happen earlier in the process rather than waiting years on dialysis and is associated with fewer complications around the time of surgery. Living donor surgery is scheduled at an agreed upon time that's best for the donor and recipient. Well-matched recipients may need less anti-rejection medicine. Living donation also minimizes the chances of delayed function of the transplanted kidney. Finally, some living donor kidney transplants can be done with a robot, reducing the size and complications of the incision. A kidney's quality can be estimated by the Kidney Donor Profile Index, or KDPI. The KDPI can be used to estimate how long a transplanted kidney will last. The lower the KDPI, the longer the kidney is expected to last. Kidneys with low KDPI are usually offered first to children and young adults on the list. Higher KDPI kidneys, especially those with KDPI over 85, are usually offered to older recipients or those with diseases like diabetes, which make dialysis more difficult to tolerate long term. For recipients who are waiting for deceased donor transplant, you should see the kidney transplant team once yearly, or if you are older than the age of 70 years, twice yearly. This is important to update your social support, insurance, medical tests, medications, and review new issues. When we call you about a kidney transplant offer, we will ask a series of questions to see if anything has changed since the last time you were seen in our clinic. We will discuss if there is anything that you should know about the kidney prior to agreeing to proceed. All kidneys accepted for transplant can carry a risk of infection. This infection could be bacterial, viral, or less commonly from yeast or fungus. For example, if a donor is found to have a bacterial infection prior to donation, we may consult with our infectious disease colleagues and decide to accept the kidney for you despite the infection that is already present. We may choose to continue antibiotic therapy in you for a certain time. All kidneys are tested for viruses such as COVID-19, hepatitis, and HIV. One way to protect against infection is to be vaccinated for viruses prior to transplant. However, sometimes, despite our best testing of the donor kidney, infection can sneak through. For example, HIV or hepatitis can be transmitted with the organ about 1 in 7,000 cases. The risk is very low, but present. You may opt to receive a kidney from a donor that has tested positive to have hepatitis C. The benefit is that you may be transplanted and off dialysis sooner. Hepatitis C is a virus that survives in your liver. Successful treatment for hepatitis C is available. If you choose to receive a kidney from a donor with hepatitis C, you will need to take extra medicines by mouth for 12 weeks. The rate of cure of hepatitis C with treatment is 95 to 100%. Delayed graft function occurs when the kidney is not working well enough to keep the recipient off dialysis. 
The transplanted kidney has been through a lot of stress and it may take a few days to a few weeks for the kidney to regain its ability to filter and make urine. While the kidney is slow to function, you may need to be supported with hemodialysis. If needed, dialysis can be continued in your regular center or sometimes at home if that is where you were getting dialysis prior. If you were on peritoneal dialysis prior to transplant, you will need to be switched to hemodialysis. Delayed graft function occurs after transplant in 25 to 50 percent of patients, and a very small number of kidneys never work. This is called primary non-function and occurs only about 1 to 2 percent of the time. The important thing to remember is that delayed graft function is common and primary non-function is rare. Be patient. The vast majority of kidneys recover despite delayed function.